I remember before every vacation we'd go on as a kid, my poor mom, it seemed like she was up the entire night before packing and getting everything ready to go. And I kind of understand it because back then you didn't necessarily have the luxury of just like running into Walmart if you forgot something. I mean, we were going like a lot of times from Minnesota to Montana. There's not really a, a whole lot in between. I'm telling a story about my childhood camping. Oh, great, more <laughs> riveting stories. It has a point. Let me guess, you guys all slept in a pickup camper, all five of you. Well, so one, the, one, one of the first trips I remember, we didn't have the camper yet, so we were tenting it, and we were on our way out to Yellowstone. So from Minnesota to Wyoming, we went through the Black Hills, and we were camping in the Black Hills, and it stormed overnight, and our tent got flooded, and it was it got very cold, and so I remember we had to go to Kmart and get socks and like warmer clothes <laughs> because wow. yeah and so i remember that but it was fun because we got like brand new socks and getting new socks was like a big deal <laughs> back then but it kind of reminds me like when we went up to the north shore last fall and we had to stop and get coats because we didn't we pack did not enough. get anybody brand new things we went to a thrift store we did <laughs> so today we want to show you uh we're going to pack up the camper but i want to share some of my favorite like small space tips for fitting stuff in um, and then Tom has a little maintenance project that on our new camper. on our brand new camper. Have we talked about how it's well a, these are made? So it's not brand new. It's two years old. It's yeah. new to us. Right. But two years old, you'd think, well, oh, we're pretty nice. Yeah. So let's go show what's totally broken right now. And then we'll get into some fun organizing. I think organizing. people who own campers are like, no. We bought a brand new one and it had it's broken still. things. Well, when we were walking around the dealership, there's like pieces of trim coming off and... The kids like, actually pulled some trim off and I was like, put that back! <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to buy this one. <laughs> All right, so in the bedroom back here, there's this really cute sliding door, which um, you can't really slide right now, right? Yeah, it fell off. Yeah. Okay, so on our drive home last time, well, it, this is kind of always, I mean, since we've had it, yeah. it's been kind of funky, not really well. I don't know if you can see here. It like pulled out of the top of the door frame, which I'm sure these are just hollow, cheap something or another. Yeah. Oh, but, is it like the slider mechanism? No, this is like part of the door came out, I think. And then the slider mechanism unscrewed itself, the, the rollers there and the pins here. Okay. So I got to take all this apart and figure out how to get it because it's just it was just like out and hanging when, yeah. I, when I, we got home with it. I get like the it's a good space saving technique to have the sliding door, but the mechanism just seems a little cheap, mm -hmm. maybe. <laughs> I think everything on a camper. Is. Yeah. So Tom gets to work on fixing that while I'm gonna work on packing. There we go. Okay, so. Not a lot of room to move around in Not here. Really. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so this side like, unscrewed. So okay. this this goes in over here. Okay. Somehow it unthreaded itself. This, and that side it looks like. It doesn't really look that broken. No, this. Oh, it's just loose. No, no, no. I think the whole thing pulled out. Oh, you're right, it's just loose. Huh. Easy peasy. Oh, that is easy, as long as it tightens back up. <laughs> it actually works after that. Pretty much. So one thing I've been learning that I just, I didn't fully understand before is that when you have small spaces, using containers can change everything. And I think it's because in the past, I, I saw containers as a bad thing. I saw them as things that were around our house that filled up with random stuff and junk things that you would use like if you had to like crash clean before someone came you like throw stuff in and shove it in a closet and then it never got sorted back out again and so I had I, I realized now looking back I had this like very negative idea of containers in my head and so I've had to adjust that but what I'm learning now is how powerful containers are when they're used properly right we've been talking about that lately and so it provides boundaries it tells us how much of each thing we can keep it assigns a home to things and for me what's been super helpful is that we i don't lose stuff in the back of cabinets so like in the kitchen here we have these upper cabinets and i was just pulling some stuff out of them um, i'm trying to kind of dry fit all of the containers in here and i'll show you that all the containers i'm putting in but like in this cabinet up here we had kept our coffee stuff 
and I was trying to put a bin in there and I'm like, why won't this bin go in? Well, because there was matches in there. There was a half used bag of marshmallows and a roll of flex tape just in case the camper like springs a leak while we're gone. <laughs> and so literally I couldn't see any of that in there because I'm short. Tom put it all up there because he's tall and he can see it, see in there. And so I had this container. I'm just mostly trying to use stuff that we already had. So I had this Dollar Tree container and it fits in there perfectly. So I'm gonna slide that to the back and then our little coffee maker will sit in front of it and that will totally fill up that cabinet and stuff won't move around while we're driving. And the other thing that I'm gonna do then is I am gonna put a label on here that this is for our coffee. So it'll all be together, the coffee maker, the coffee. I have labels um, here that I'm working on making. So it's gonna be very clear. What goes in this cabinet? The coffee stuff, <laughs> right? What doesn't go in there? Uh, matchbooks and half to use bags of marshmallows, right? <laughs> so like I said, I've been going around and trying to kind of fit the containers in before I assign like permanent homes to everything. So I'm gonna show you some of the containers that I've been putting in place. All right, Tom just said he's done. Was it really that simple of a fix? <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. So now you've got the to wood hang is, it back. The wood is cracked on top. Oh. So. It might be a temporary thing. I'm sure that it loosened up because of that. I see. Um, so yes, it may be a temporary fix. Oh. Come in, what buddy. Do you want? Let me guess. You want to go down to the shop with Grandpa? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How am I going to get any packing done? All right, give me one second. I'm trying to see if Daddy fixed the door here. I did. I just have to um, crank up those screws. So How do you do I got to get a teeny tiny little wrench and okay. I could probably just take this piece off but actually make it a lot easier. Oh, yeah, that'll make it a little easier. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so. Yeah, that track doesn't look super hardcore, does it? Not in the least. It looks kind of bent up a little bit too. That's probably why it doesn't slide sure super does. smooth. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Still doesn't work super great, but at least it camper. should work for an hour, right? All right. And then it gets caught on this little, little this like, fancy latch, latch here. It is pretty fancy. There you go. All My right. grandparents had a double wide trailer that they lived in in the summer. Yeah. And I remember this kind of stuff all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> but it's light. Yeah. <laughs> so the biggest storage space we have is this closet here by the door, which is awesome. It has built in shelves, which are really nice. But but they're spaced kind of far apart and the lip on them isn't that big. So I wanted to add some containers so that we really didn't have to worry about stuff moving around while we're traveling. And then the other thing we're running into is that we like to have a case of water here at the bottom of the closet, but then it's also where the shoes need to go. So I thought if we could just have these bins on here, shoes can go in there, but it's still possible to get to the water. So I thought we could try that out. And then the rest of these, will be used for food. And then the one at the very top is for toilet papers. So I definitely need to label that, otherwise we'll forget that it's there when we need it. And then for these cabinets, I had some extra leftover like acrylic bins that I had gotten from my mom's pantry that we didn't end up using. And so I wanted to see if they would fit in here and they actually fit really well in here. Um, they don't like, they don't totally fill up the space, but we don't need to maximize every inch. Like already just adding this is going to really add a lot of structure to the storage space and make it way more functional. So I'm not worried about all of that space being like perfectly used by containers. I think just that is going to work really well. All right, so let's um, let's put some labels on some of this and start putting it back together. And then I'll show you a couple spaces where I'm not quite sure what the best solution is going to be and we'll figure it out. And I'd gotten these labels just off Amazon. I don't know, there must be like a hundred in there. I've been using them for everything and they work really great. And I like that um, they're just kind of like a cardboard material, but if I mess up, I don't feel bad because there's a bunch more, so it doesn't actually matter.
Okay, so under the sink is one of these spaces where I'm just kind of like, I don't know <laughs> what to do. And I kind of just want to close the doors and just ignore it, right? But I do knew, no, we need to be able to use that garbage can, but it's full of stuff from our old camper. So I just need to pull it out and figure out what's all in here and then assign homes for everything and then we'll be in much better shape. How many napkins do you need when you go camping? So of course too, a big piece of this is inventory and being realistic about how much stuff we actually need. Like I just realized we had put like full size grilling utensils in here. Um, but Tom doesn't ever use these when we're camping. He uses this and this. So I only need to keep these in here and these can go back by his regular grill. Um, and then we also had like three full containers of napkins. So we don't need that all. So I'm going to send some of those back in the house. And then I realized that we need a bin up there it would make sense for like bowls and dishes. So I'm going to move those into one of those bins and then put the rest of the stuff away where it goes. And it actually wasn't as scary as I thought. And I told, I just told Tom, I'm like, oh, we need garbage bags for this garbage can. And I found some in there. So we're all set on that too. So it felt scary at first, but it actually isn't too bad. It's so funny because I was literally just like, I was feeling really defeated and just like, I should just quit. It's getting hot in here. I don't feel like working on this anymore. But I'm like, okay, just tackle this cabinet first. And that actually felt like a win. So since I'm feeling energized, let's tackle this cabinet under the beds here. So we have a heater. Um, I thought about taking that out and then I thought about my story with the Black Hills. So I think it's important we leave it in. We have some tablecloths we sometimes use. Um, now this is cool. Like I assigned a bin for toilet paper, right? So now I know just put the toilet paper in that bin. So I'm going to put that in there. And then I'd also stuck this container back here to see if it would fit along with this one. And it does. So I want to reserve this laundry basket for dirty laundry and that will stay down here. But then the bin in the back, I'm going to put stuff on in as storage. So I'm going to try and kind of sort this out see how much we can fit in that bin back there just to really make this cabinet functional. Okay, this maybe wasn't that dramatic. <laughs> um, I did put the heater and the tablecloths in that back bin. And then these are our bath towels that we use while we're camping. And so I'm just gonna leave them in the basket till we get to where we're going. And then I'll put them on the hooks in the bathroom. And I'll just have to see if there's anything that else that needs to go in here. We could fit a few more things if we needed to, but otherwise I'm just gonna leave this like this for now. So then we have these kind of shallow, useless cabinets um, here underneath the TV. And so I was just trying to think through the things we normally put here, DVDs. I think it'd be a great spot to put the bug spray and sunblock. So I have a few containers, I just, <laughs> forced this basket in there. It didn't want to go in there, but I need to clean out the stuff underneath it. Um, and then I'm going to move around some of that stuff too and just see if we can make this a little bit more functional. This was Tom's attempt at making it not smell so much in here. But honestly, since we've been out here this time, I even asked him and he said it doesn't smell. So I don't think we have a mold issue, but we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. <laughs> So these containers fit really nice up here. And then I think these little black crates actually fit in here and the door still closes. So I'm gonna use those to try and organize this space a little bit. So we have everything labeled. And the other thing that is really nice about labeling everything is that then we know like when we come out here to pack we know if we're forgetting anything so if i open this cabinet and i'm like oh the dvds case is empty that's because we checked out dvds from the library and they're still in the car right so i can just send someone like go get the dvds quick and then we just know or if the bug spray and sunblock basket is empty then we know i also like that this basket can come out of here so we could just grab it if we want to like take it outside this basket will not come out <laughs> that's staying in there forever now <laughs> but that's fine um but you know th this was a container we had this is from the dollar store so i'm trying to use 
dollar store bins whenever possible and then invest in good bins only when it's completely necessary, but I do see it as a worthwhile investment now. All right, so now I wanna show you how we organize the bathroom real quick. It's, I don't know, organize might be a strong term for what we do. So ever since our first camper for bathroom stuff, I just take a bin, like a sturdy bin, I bring it in the house and the kids and I put all of our stuff in it. And then it just lives in the bathtub and when someone takes a shower, they pull it out and they set it on the toilet. And then Tom puts all of his stuff in the medicine cabinet, which works well. And then the only other thing we have in here down below the sink, um, I just have a little bin that we can put extra toilet paper in. And the other thing I like about having everything just in this bathroom bin is that then when we get back home, it's really easy just to carry the whole thing back inside, put everything back in the bathroom. So especially when we do just like a weekend trip, it's kind of a pain to pack for, right? Because it's a short time. So. We just throw everything in there, easy to bring out here, easy to bring back in the house. And so I really like that, but I understand it might not, might not be for everybody. Now for kids clothes, this is an area that got overpacked in the past. So now they each have one of these bins and they put their clothes in for the week in there. And this is, I mean, they're like, that's a week's worth of clothes. And if we have to do a lot of laundry along the way, we will, but they fit in this um, storage underneath the dinette really well. Adeline had said she was like there's no way I could pack all my clothes in there. I'll show you her bin. She totally fit it all in there. So here's Adeline. I know that bin like it doesn't seem big but <laughs> we really don't meet, need as many clothes as we think and then Maggie's is back there too. So but this has worked well to keep the kids clothes in here and then Tom was bringing some of this, the food out and stuff so I could start putting it away. So I just started putting everything in bins. Like I said, it's really nice just kind of knowing where everything goes, having an assigned place for it. And then he moved the case of water out here um, to the outdoor kitchen fridge. So this actually works really well in here now for, with the extra bins for extra shoes. So then as far as Tom and I stuff, there's plenty of room in the cabinets here in the bedroom to pack stuff. And we just grabbed our bedding off of our beds. So. I'll show you, we try to not bring too much clothing. So Tom has his stuff packed in the side. That's everything for him for the week. And then the previous owner had actually put hanging rods in this back closet. So I decided just to hang my tops and then I put everybody's raincoats down below. And then everything else is in this cabinet over here. I put a container in the bottom to use as kind of like a drawer and that seems to work really well. And then in the, this upper cabinet right above the bed, we just put some camera stuff. Otherwise it is empty. And then at the very bottom, I just have a bin with some homeschooling stuff and some books that I'm hoping to read. And for the kids, we just grab some blankets and pillows um, from their beds. And then they can each bring a backpack with activities, toys, whatever they want to put in it. And that just kind of lives on their bunk. And then I was just putting some stuff away up here. So we have our bread bin. And then this bin over here, I put like paper bowls and disposable coffee cups. And then in here I put like the real dishes, but I limit it. I mean, just like at home to like one thing per person. I only have one small frying pan in there because that's all that we ever use. We have the air fryer with as well. Um, and then I can tell you just a little bit how we cook or plan for food for the week. So I plan our meals basically around the protein. So I bring a big, this is a big container of chicken taco meat that's gonna go with so we can have chicken tacos. And then we just do like the standard like hamburgers, brats, we'll do cold sandwiches, and then usually have like fruit and veggie with it and chips. Um, in the mornings, a lot of times the kids will just eat cereal. Like we go just for the easy stuff. Like when we're, I don't even like cooking when we're at home. So <laughs> when we're on vacation, I especially don't like cooking. And then I'll also show you where I stick our produce while we're traveling. So I put this basket in the sink for produce and I have a few more things I need to bring out of the house in there. But what I like is then when we're stopped, I'll take it out and I'll set it on the counter and we can see everything that we need to eat up for produce. So that has worked really well. And then while we're traveling, it's super easy just to keep it in there. All right, so we're kind of winding up, getting everything packed up so we can hit the road. I think, I think one of the biggest things that we're learning uh, when we're packing for camping is just that we don't actually have to be prepared for like every scenario out there and it's okay if the kids wear a pair of dirty shorts for an extra day or if we or double three. 
or if we double our bath towels as beach towels or if we don't have a clothesline and it'd be really nice to have a clothesline i don't know we're just like trying not to overthink it or like really realizing like we only use one small frying pan like we don't need a pot or three pots or anything like that we actually use a microwave a lot more than a pot at all yeah <laughs> Or a fire. Yeah. So we try to just, because you had made the comment too, between our last camper and this one, you're like, there's a lot more stuff I want to get rid of. Mm -hmm. So, and we had inherited with our last camper, they left a bunch of stuff in it for us, which was kind. But I know how the extra stuff just accumulates like, oh, extra games in case we have a rain day and yeah, just yeah. all that stuff. So we're trying to just keep it really simplified and pared down. I think it makes camping more enjoyable. It keeps the camper cleaner when everything like has a home and everyone knows where that goes. It's really easy to pick up and put stuff away. Mm -hmm. So I think I think this is gonna work out pretty good. And if we have to make adjustments as we go, we'll just do that. It's not Throw it out the window the way. like rip off the tag and you know, give it a different name or something is more what I meant. Oh, you mean your bins. <laughs> and so we're gonna head down to Kentucky for the next week and we're gonna check out um, the Ark Encounter and just, I know, when we were driving back home from Florida, we just thought it was really pretty and mm -hmm. not so far from home. It was, it's like an 11 hour drive. So just to get somewhere a little bit different, see some different stuff, but not have to drive for days and days and days <laughs> like we have in the past. Plus, we don't want to drive that far with the excursion. And there's that. Anyway. Tom so. had it checked out. Supposedly everything's good, but well, I don't know if we still have trust to go super far with the excursion. We're going to try. So. And when we get home, we're probably most likely we're going to sell it for real this time. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, excited to just kind of head out, get out of town for a little while, and relax and see what we see. And hopefully it'll be a very, very, very boring, mundane Drive. trip. Yep. yep. Nothing nothing exciting. No, just relaxing yep. and book reading and kids swimming and, and all that. So, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll let you know. <laughs> So we hope you have a really great weekend. We love you and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.